Well, hey, howdy, hey, everybody. Scott here, and today we're going to talk about Siberian ginseng. Now, the Siberian ginseng is not one of the true ginsengs, but it works about the same, so um, it just gets lumped in there. It is, it's related to the ginsengs. Uh, chemically, it works a little different, but it has a lot of the same effects. It's a Eleutherococcus syntacosis. Um, I may have stepped on some toes there with the Latin, but I think that's pretty close. Um, when you are searching for this uh, herb, because it, it doesn't grow in the United States, uh, not naturally unless somebody's brought it in, uh, you'll probably be buying it. But uh, you, you might see it described as Siberian ginseng or Hungarian ginseng. Um, Asian ginseng. Oh no, sorry. Asian ginseng is the uh, that'll be the actual uh, uh, actual ginseng ginseng. Um, what's the other one? You can uh, oh uh, Elothero or Eulothero. I mostly I hear it pronounced uh, as uh, Elothero root, but occasionally you'll hear it pronounced as uh, as as Eulothero root. So you know the more you know. Um, the identification, should you happen to, you know, live somewhere in China or Russia or Northeast or maybe Eastern uh, Asia, uh, this herb is a woody shrub. It has thorny stems that you can see in the picture. Uh, it has, uh, I guess I didn't put it on the notes here, but it has palmate leaves. Uh, in that last picture, you could see the, the leaves. Um, palmate, meaning that it's made up of multiple leaflets, and the leaflets come out like the fingers from your palm. Rather than, uh, rather than being pinnately compound, which means feather-like, those come out like, you know, like it looks like a feather, but these are palmate. Uh, it's a yeah, woody shrub, thorny stems, and these globular clusters of these dark, kind of a black berries. So they grow in sort of a globe shape. They don't always have enough berries to make that globe. I'm really not that familiar with going out and identifying these because they don't live anywhere near me. I really don't know if there are poisonous lookalikes in that part of the world because I've never been over there and uh, I don't think I have I don't think I have much in the way of uh, foraging books about that area. So if you live over there, you may want to make a comment down below and let me know if there's anything that's uh, dangerous that's a lookalike. They seem to be tolerant of many soil types. I've thought about trying to grow either this or one of the true ginsengs. Uh, around me. They take a while to grow, uh, but I'm okay with that. The time's going to pass anyway. We'll see. We may get into that. And, uh, oh, I've made a note again about thorny stems. Well, that's and that's the third time I think I've mentioned it. So, they have thorny stems. I really want you to know that, apparently. They do apparently have a couple of edible things, although I've never tried to eat these, because, again, they don't grow anywhere near me. Apparently, the young leaves are edible when boiled, and uh, they're sometimes dried to use as a tea. I hear some people say that you can use the tea, uh, the uh, or the leaves medicinally. I don't know if that's, I, I don't know how much truth is in that, or if they're as powerful or less powerful, or they do or don't have the effect. Now, medicinally, its main claim to fame, and, and really every plant does more than one thing, but its main claim to fame is that it's an adaptogen, and an adaptogen just helps you to respond to stress. It helps you adapt to stressful situations. And it's a non-specific stress response, just sort of an overall uh, helping thing. Whether it's an internal, external stress, physical stress, mental stress, you know, emotional, spiritual, what have you, the the stress it helps you modulate your response to it, so you don't overreact and you don't underreact to it. Um, Siberian ginseng is especially useful for those types of conditions. Uh, that you might have that are affected by stress or by a prolonged stress. So, you know, um, maybe like a, an adrenal fatigue because you've been stressed out for so long, going, 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 and you're just, ugh, you're just pooped and you're done. Or uh, something like an irritable, irritable bowel condition where stress doesn't, see, stress doesn't cause irritable bowel, but it can um, really get it whipped up in a frenzy. And uh, if you're having a bad day, uh, emotionally, you can be having a bad day uh, in your guts with, with that type of condition. And this would be helpful with that. It helps to modulate your response to the stress. Therefore, it kind of modulates the amount of gut discomfort you would have with those conditions. And uh, because of its adaptogen properties, it's more or less a general tonic for the whole body. It just kind of works on all of you. It's good for supporting the recovery 
uh, of people from diseases or surgeries. Uh, it's uh, It's got a lot of praise in its uh, ability to help people going through chemotherapy or recovering from that. I've never... Um, I've never had anybody using it for that. I don't have any first-hand experience there, but it uh, it seems to. I mean, just from the you know second-hand accounts I hear, it seems to be good for that, or for recovering from trauma. Um, and you can take it long term, although you want to give it a break. I think I've got a slide coming up talking about taking a break every every so often, so your body doesn't just start ignoring it, and so it stays fresh. Um, and if you take it long term, it can help to minimize uh, how often you get those acute affections. Not oh, it's a cute infection, but acute as in as in sudden, you know, like your cold or your flu or something that just pops up, because you know um, when we're stressed out, our immune system is not working as well. So when you have an adaptogen and you're uh, responding appropriately to stresses, your immune system stays active, and uh, Siberian ginseng does seem to have some immune stimulating effects, although I'm not sure if it is directly immune stimulating or if that's just a side effect from its adaptogen uh, properties. And it's also just good for your overall well-being. Now let's talk about um, how much of this you might want to take. Um, estimates or, or dosage recommendations vary all over the place uh, as to how much and, and for how long and how often you want to take these. So uh, take this as just sort of a just a uh, one of many suggestions, <laughs> so feel free to look other places and get different people's thoughts on this. But if you want to take it as a tincture, somewhere between 50 to 100 drops three times a day, I don't actually have it as a tincture, and I find myself wondering why why I have never tinctured any of this. Um, so I think probably tomorrow I will take my uh, my ginseng powder, and I think I might start a tincture, because I really don't know why I don't have this tinctured up. But uh, that's equivalent to about 1 to 200 milligrams of a solid extract if you like to purchase it that way, uh, concentrated to 20 to 1 ratio. Or uh, as a just the dried root, if you just get the dried root powder, which is what I do, is I, I just buy the powder. Uh, about 2 to 3 grams, 3 times a day. And that's not a whole lot. Um, uh, I measure that out on my scale to be a, about... Uh, well, that's a typo right there, not one-fifth. That, that should say one and a half to two teaspoons. That's a, that's a big discrepancy from one-fifth of a teaspoon to two. Yeah, the two to three grams is about one and a half to two teaspoons, somewhere in there. And, um, yeah, I, I'd say take it for, you know, four to six weeks and then give it a two-week break. Some people will say don't take it for longer than three weeks. Uh... I'm not as concerned about this one. I guess it depends on on who's taking it. Um, just kind of feel it out for yourself. If you have um, access to an herbalist personally that you know knows you as a person better in your own personal circumstances, then you know you can talk to them and see if they think it's uh, you know reasonable for you to take it up to six weeks, or if they think maybe you should just take it uh, you know over a shorter period and then take a break. Now, as for some cautions. You know, some people seem to view this as a, you know, relatively safe herb with, you know, few things to worry about. And really, I think overall it is. It's it's not really like a dangerous herb. It's not like we're dealing with poke root where we have to measure out, you know, the quantities really carefully. Um, but then, you know, some people, some people treat it real safe and some people treat it like, oh, don't take it with these and that medicine and this condition and that condition and never ever give it to this person. And like, like it's made out of, I mean... You start to wonder at a point. I mean, does it? Does anybody get to take this? I mean, who, who would you give this to? But um, I, I think it's pretty reasonable to uh, uh, use some caution if you are using, say, cardiac and uh, blood sugar type medications. Uh, because if you think about it, if you are taking a drug to, say, lower your blood pressure because you maybe you're stressed out, so you have a high blood pressure. And then you start taking some Siberian ginseng. Well, all of a sudden your body is responding to stress more efficiently, more appropriately, and so your body's not, you know, bumping up your blood pressure so high. So you have something closer to a normal blood pressure, except that you are taking that medication to lower your blood pressure, and now, ooh, well, maybe now you have a real low blood pressure. Um, so that that's no good. Or the same thing with you know blood sugar. Um, this is the type of herb that 
might be uh, it might be able to get you off of some of your medications, but you definitely want to work with your doctor on that uh, because I mean you you don't want to take medications that you don't need, but you you don't know when that point is. Just just make sure that you're working with your doctor or some kind of trusted healthcare person uh, if that's your goal, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to get there. Also, this plant might not be appropriate for individuals with what I would call a high energy issue. People that are hyperactive, manic, have high blood pressure. Um, this is a, I mean, it's a, I, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not as super worried about these, but it's not something that I would just brush off either. It's something to keep in mind, uh, you know, and use caution. And if you have one of these conditions, you, uh, I mean, I think it would definitely be prudent to get some more one-on-one -on -one time with an herbalist uh, that you can talk about your own specific issues with and see if, uh, if you both together think that this is a good herb for you. Also, um, you may not want to take this if you use a lot of caffeine or if you're on some kind of a stimulant drug, you know, that's a high energy state. So I hope this has been helpful. This kind of wraps it up, and it brings me to my customary shameless plug. If you liked this and you want to see some more, or if you want to support the anti-zombie efforts, you know, I say that a lot, and this is a forger's guide to the zombie apocalypse. I don't actually talk about zombies that much. We need to do an actual zombie survival post during my 31 days. In any event, why don't you head on over to patreon.com slash foragers guide and throw some money at me. Hey, what were you using that dollar for anyway? <laughs> you didn't need to go buy a Coke. Can you still buy a Coke for a dollar? I have no idea. I don't ever drink Cokes. Um, but you can get awesome benefits like ebooks and, uh, you know, bonus articles, bonus videos. And, uh, there's a, I have a bonus Patreon thing going on right, right now too. Just like I have these, uh, this 31 day video challenge. I have a 31 day bonus material challenge for my patrons. So you can head on over there and you can, uh, peruse back through the past posts and pick up all of those, pick up the past posts, my P -p I've, I've dropped it. I can't think of more P things to say. Anyway, head on over there. And uh, <laughs> until the next video, keep your eyes out for plants and zombies. And happy foraging.